Stonge mbele ambapo uchumi wa taifa unatarajiwa kukua kwa kiwango cha asilimia tano nukta sita mwaka huu ikilinganishwa na asilimia tano nukta nane iliyo ratibiwa hapo awali hii ni kwa mujibu wa tathmini ya shirika la fedha duniani IMF haya yamezungumzwa katika hafla iliyohudhuriwa na gavana wa benki kuu Patrick Njoroge Yeah, the question about inclusive growth. This is essential, not just for Kenya, but for the entire region. Mm. And I think where we've done poorly, sorry to put this on the table, is where we have assumed that uh, the benefits of globalization will raise everybody mm. in, the, um, in the economy, meaning or in Africa, wherever it is. And I think we are beginning to see I'm a firm believer in globalization. Let me put my credentials on the table. But I think there is another side to it. We have to identify the losers and actually bring them forward. So it doesn't happen automatically. Um, and I think this is where we have kind of, and I'm not talking just about our region, I'm talking globally as economists. This is the problem you've seen even in uh, Chile, for instance an economy that has gone very well, but they were losers, and that's why they're having the social strife they have there. So I think it is important for us to address that as economists, as social, as people um, that are interested in our country. So let's, let's deal with that. It won't happen automatically. They are always losers, and we have to deal with the losers um, in a sense of uh, bring them forward. There was that chat that, um, Abbe mentioned a moment ago, which was really fascinating, about the benefits for, from competition. And uh, they, they are huge, according to the chart. But actually, they are losers in that whole business. Think about, for those of us that live here, think about, for instance, uh, what happens when uh, you have a new supermarket in your region. So you have all those mamambogas who are now out of business because the supermarket sells the potatoes or the um, onions at much cheaper prices or whatever it is, you know. So I think it is important to deal with that. Finally, and I'm sorry I took a bit more time, the issue of, uh, I, I'm, I'm quite uncomfortable by the whole business of uh, exporting our labor. What, what do I mean by that? To me, today and now, that word is called migration, right? And we see it in the Mediterranean Sea. I think we understand what we are saying. And that tragedy, I think, is too hard to take. So we need to, to somehow create opportunities here. There's a reason why all those young men and women are taking their lives in their hands, getting on a boat that is meant for 10, and there are 100 of them there, and uh, maybe 10% of them never re Actually, the ratios are terrible. I'm not going to go to the ratios of the survival rates. The point is, I think that's a huge cost we cannot have. And it just means we have to create those opportunities here so that they can actually, um, yeah, uh, fulfill their lives. And um, I always say we need to celebrate our small wins because sometimes we are crowded by so much that is hap not happening that when we win on an area, then it becomes hard to celebrate. And so the ease of doing business indicators, I think it's something that we must always celebrate because... I say it's a one thing that uh, parades countries around the world um, on what you'd call a beauty pageant. And so how good you look in your ease of doing business, that's what investors are looking at. So that's our first step. Um, and so you have to continue to look good at that level so that you're, you're, you're in, uh, encouraging investors. And we've seen a lot of uh, interest from around the world. I cannot just say it's a specific region. We've seen different regions, whether it's Asia, Middle East, uh, Europe, and the US, a lot of interest in, uh, in, this, in the country in terms of investments. But there's a second level, which is, um, I think, what we'd call in the beauty pageant, the skin dip. If you look at uh, how they value, they look at uh, beauty pageants, they first look at the physical, and then they interact with them, you know, to get to know what do they know, what are they about. And I think that's the second level that we need to move as a country. And um, I think where we're not doing very well is on the competitive index side. I think we've dropped um, a few steps back. And, um, and that has, it's where a lot of the Kenyans feel the pinch. And so when you say about the ease of doing business, we're doing well. And because the pinch is at the competitive area and uh, the area of uh, bribery index, then you find Kenyans going back and telling you 
things on the ground are different. So, and that's because everyone comes because they're attracted to what they're seeing in the ease of doing business. Then they come and uh, quickly are able to register a company, but then they need to move to the next level of um, investing. And that's where the rubber meets the road that we're finding uh, in terms of um, that whole uh, the, the process of um, starting of uh, really getting your business to work in terms of the regulators and uh, how that the efficiency around that is, is really pretty slow. Then uh, secondly, on the cost of the production side. So yes, you maneuver your way through the regulators. It takes you six to nine months, two to three years. You're almost giving up, and then maybe you get to the implementation. And then you look at the cost of doing business, a cost of production. And a lot of our inputs are still very, very high uh, from transport log and logistics. Uh, you look at, uh, yes, it's easy to access energy now, but the cost is still prohibitive when you compare with some of the countries that we're trying to compete with in terms of business. Um, then you look at uh, in terms of um, the cost of credit, in terms of an SME, so you've quickly registered. Now it's very easy to start a business that has an SME because all you need is one directorship, and like before when you need to do the AGM and all that. So yes, you've started that business, then you want to access the credit. So it's accessible, but the cost is still prohibitive. You know, and so you start finding these barriers, and that's what's really affecting the country. The story of growth in the region since around 2016 has not changed much. Um, what we saw uh, around 2016 was a bifurcation of the growth paths, uh, broadly uh, to a first approximation along uh, the basis around which countries rely on commodity prices. For non-resource, uh, non non-commodity uh, intensive countries uh, depicted by the gray line, uh, the path for per capita GDP growth really has kept on, on the same trend it has been on uh, since uh, the mid-2000s. However, for more commodity-reliant countries, uh, the blue line here, growth uh, ha has been much more sluggish uh, for the last uh, three, four years. And because this commodity exporting group uh, uh, includes some of the larger economies in the region, the likes of Nigeria, South Africa, uh, this has dragged down the region's overall growth rate. Uh, and so that's why you, where you see growth, uh, uh, you know, the overall growth rate is shown by the orange line here. That has also kinked uh, since around 2016. So in terms of actual uh, numbers, our forecast is for growth uh, in the region uh, to remain stable at the 3.2% mark uh, uh, in 2019 and pick up to uh, acce you know, accelerate somewhat to the 3.6% mark in 2020. This histogram uh, shows, however, uh, the tremendous variation in growth rates uh, in the region. Each box shows, um, you know, uh, is a data point for a single country. And as you can see, one of the things that marks, uh, uh, with apologies to the governor, one of the, region, one of the things that mark uh, the region's growth, uh, one of the ways in which we can categorize the region's growth performance is really this tremendous variation, the heterogeneity, as economists would say. The budget process, we do that. I know it is very difficult to talk to each and every Kenyan, you know, but uh, we try our best. The parliament itself does the same. And most of the investment that you are seeing are coming from that kind of uh, uh, consultation. And uh, we are subject to parliamentary oversight over that. There is a committee that actually looks at that. Um, but in terms of investing in uh, social uh, um, sectors, I think we have done quite well in terms of health, with uh, the access to health facilities now in most in, 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 um, in, in the, up, up to the county level is much more than before. We have cash transfers to uh, communities that are uh, disadvantaged, and uh, I think that is showing up in terms of indicators. Recently, we got this uh, new index by the World Bank on Human Capital. Is it development or something? Where Kenya actually came out very strong on that. Uh, of course, the areas where there are weaknesses. So I think there is a lot more happening in that area than uh, um, many might, might uh, think. But of course, there's always um, room for improvement. And as we uh, correctly put it again, this has to be seen in the context of also uh, maintaining our fiscal position in us, which is sustainable. 
Na mshukran sana mtazamaji kwa kuendelea kututazama tuchukue mapumziko mengine mafupi lakini tutarudi na mengi zaidi hivi punde.